Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session for our Parent and Family Services Summer Webinar Series. I'm really excited about today's presentation because I think that there is a lot of, not even I think, I know that there's a lot of great information that are going to, is going to be shared today by our Vulcan Academic uh, Success Center. So a few things that I want to make sure that we share with everyone. One is, again, we're just very excited that you are here. We want to make sure that you learn and are comfortable with all the different resources and the support and services that are available to all of our students. And we want this to be a super engaging and an interactive experience for all of our family members. So we know that we've got family members that are joining us via Zoom, and we want you to make sure that if you have questions that pop up at any time today, that you put in your questions into the Q&A function, that you'll find that Q&A box down at the bottom of your Zoom screen. But we also know that we've got some family members that are potentially watching us through our Facebook page. And so we want to let you know that we're monitoring that as well. So if you have any questions or comments, all you need to do is put your questions into the comments section on the Facebook page. And we are also going to be able to ask those questions at the end of today's presentation as well. As per always, we want to make sure that we are maintaining and respecting the privacy of all of our students. So just please ensure that you're not providing any questions or identifying information related to your specific student, like a full name or email address or anything along those lines. Um, but we just want to make sure, say again that we are very excited that you're here. We want to make sure that you understand that there is a plethora of resources and opportunities on our campus to ensure that your student is successful in the classroom. And one of the best ways that you can ensure our student success is by utilization of our what we use very fondly known as the V mask. And so we've got our director of our V mask here today to talk you through all of the different services that they're able to offer to all UAB students. So I'd like to introduce Dr. Jennifer Wyckoff. Good afternoon. Thank you so much, Meredith. Um, I'm excited to be here with you all this afternoon and get started with um, sharing information about our office, about our services, what we do, how we help students be successful, um, at UAB. So um, thank you so much for having me this afternoon, Meredith. Um, if nothing else needs to come before us, Meredith, I guess I can go ahead and share my screen and get started. Uh, awesome. All right. Well, you guys hold on tight because I'm about to get ready to get started with all this information. So I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see um, my PowerPoint here. Hopefully that's um, coming up and it's going to look Get that going from the beginning. It takes a little while to, to kick in. Um, as we know, PowerPoint can be a little slow with us sometimes. But um, again, welcome. Thank you guys for being here with me this afternoon. I'm coming to you from my office. I'm actually on campus today. Um, we're slowly beginning to uh, re-enter campus. And so I've been doing a little things to get things prepared for us as we get ready to start the semester. And so I'm happy to um, share with you a little bit about our services um, and who we are exactly um, as the VMASC office. So the Vocal Materials Academic Success Center is our name and we are VMASC for short and um, I'm the director Jennifer Wyckoff. I've been here at UAB a total of about 11 years. Um, I've been in this position about a year and a half um, and so I'm excited to um, be able to do what I truly love the most, which is making sure we can help students be successful, graduate, and go on to have productive lives and productive careers. Um, I've been in higher education a total of about 20 years. Um, and so this has just really been an opportunity for me um, to do what I truly love the most, which is help students in their success. Um, <clears throat> about Four years ago, the Vulcan Materials Company is a local Birmingham company, um, gave us a very generous gift. And so uh, with that came the naming of our center. So we are one of very few named centers on our campus and we are very fortunate to have that gift from the Vulcan Materials Company. So that's how we got our name, which was, we were formerly known as the Academic Success Center. So we added the Vulcan Materials part. So we are VMASC for short, and that's how everyone kind of refers to us um, as the VMASC office. And so what do we do? What we do, we provide academic and exploratory advising for students who are unsure what they want to be when they grow up is usually how I like to explain it. Um, and what 
they are unsure about which major they're actually interested in pursuing, which will eventually lead them to um, a career, maybe graduate school, maybe um, some type of professional school. And so we have five academic advisors who work in our office who help students with that process and helping them to matriculate into either various majors. So we help some students um, who are trying to get in nursing school, environmental sciences, um, and other programs, engineering, as well as students who are just unsure what they would actually like to major in. Um, the other services we provide, supplemental instruction, tutoring and success workshops. Again, all these things help the student um, to be a better, well-rounded student. And so I will go into more specific details about each of our services and what we do um, for our students. At the bottom, you see a link to our website, uab.edu slash success. Um, it's very easy to remember. Um, and so on our website will be all of the same information. We're getting ready to do some additional updates as we prepare for the fall because things will look a little different. And so um, I just encourage you to visit our website and again, be on the lookout um, about mid-August for those new changes and new updates um, to our services. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch the slide. Here I am again. Um, and again, I want you to make sure that if there's anything we can help you with, questions that you have, um, we're here. Our office um, is, is, is open and we are able to answer our phones um, remotely. So that is one of the benefits and one of the things I've appreciated about how advanced our technology is here on campus. Um, so even when we had to shut down, in early March, our offices, you could still call our office and get a live person. And that's something that I like to kind of pride myself on because I know how it is sometimes when you're calling and calling and calling and calling, you can't get anybody or you keep getting transferred. And so I didn't want um, our students and, and anybody who needed to reach us to have that uh, happen to them when we were um, sort of in this shutdown mode um, in early March, mid-March. And so we, one of the things we did was we ensured that students could still call us and get a live person, you know, aside from maybe a lunch hour or after hours, but during normal business hours, we were um, available to answer the phone. And then I also have my cell phone listed. If you would like to make a note of that, if you'd like to call or text or have questions, I'd be happy to um, respond to you as well um, via either calling our direct office, calling my cell phone, or emailing me. Um, and you, my email address is listed there. So I want to take a minute and just kind of um, introduce you to our team. Um, I'm excited that we have um, a great assembly of individuals um, here in the VMASC office to, again, help your students be successful. So I could not do what I do without these folks. And I'm so excited to have a full staff. It's been a little bit of a transition, but we are up and running. We are fully staffed um, and everybody has been working um, all summer, all semester to make sure we have a great fall uh, for your students. Um, so our assistant director, Dr. Mike McConnell, he's been with the VMAS um, for about almost about five years. Um, and so I'm excited to have him um, as sort of my left hand or my right hand, just depending on what day it is, um, to help me kind of keep things moving in the office. And he also works uh, with our students in, in an advising capacity as well. So he's also advising students and he is making sure our advising team has everything that they need. And we have Leah Carpenter, who's been with us a about the same amount of time, about four or five years. And so she has um, got a wealth of knowledge and she works uh, primarily with our students who are trying to get into nursing school. But she has a, a, a great personality and great um, opportunity to ensure that our students are getting what they need, the right requirements and things of that nature. Um, Stacy Green is one of our um, major gurus of helping our exploratory students. She's been with us all, almost a year, but she has come to us with previous advising experience, which is definitely a plus um, when you're coming into an environment and you're working with students 
who are um, trying to figure out where they want to go and what they want to do. So I'm excited that we have Stacy on the team. Jasmine Williams is um, our advisor who works with our Blazing Start um, students as well as our exploratory students. She's a two-time UAB graduate and has been with us about a year as well. So Jasmine is full of life, full of energy, and she's definitely been an asset to the team. Matt Lewis um, came to us from Texas about three months ago. So could you imagine having to move your life in the middle of a pandemic? Um, Matt did. And so around May, he started um, working with us and today was his first time ever visiting the office. So um, that we, he's been a trooper, he's been a go-getter and he's definitely been an asset to our advising team as well. Then we have Eliza Graham, who is our office manager. Eliza has been running our social media um, and she has been a great asset to our office. Um, and she's been with us almost six months now. So we're excited that she's here as well. And then our coordinator. So we have Lauren Lee, who uh, joined us around January uh, from Kentucky. And she's working with our tutoring um, program and she is coordinating our tutoring. She works with our students to help them develop academic plans and she we're going to begin um, a coaching series this fall and so she's going to be working quite a bit with that. And then Hillary Mural also came to us around February. She's been at UAB um, I think about five years as well and we're excited to have her coordinating our supplemental instruction as well as helping with our uh, Canvas uh, course for our SAP students and things of that nature. So um, Hillary is uh, definitely been a joy to have in the office as well. So that is our team. Um, so again, um, some of the students will not be able to see these individuals in person, but that's the beauty of technology, the beauty of Zoom. They'll be able to uh, definitely have a face that they can see um, via this uh, Zoom technology that we have. And so i um, excited to kind of introduce the team to you guys. So I'm going to go a little bit more into detail about the advising partnership and how we work with students here at UAB. So with the advising partnership, our goal is to make sure the students have what they need, that they have um, timely information, that they have um, specific information, and that they know the rules and the regulations. Uh, we help them kind of meet their goals, uh, kind of help them figure out what their goals should be. Um, we help them learn about all of our different policies and making sure that they have uh, a specific plan to help them be successful. And this, these are things that we do throughout the advising partnership with our students. Um, again, the time that we spend with students could be as, as little as a semester because maybe they figured out pretty quickly, hey, I know exactly what I wanna major in. And what we do from that point is we connect them directly with their new advisor in their new major. And so we work pretty closely with all of our schools, all of our um, academic partners on campus to ensure that our students um, have what they need as they transition in those majors. And sometimes we work with students a little bit longer and we let them know that that's okay. It can take you a little longer than your friend or your roommate or your brother or your sister um, to figure out what you want to do because we want to make sure you make the right decision. We don't want it to be a rush decision or you pick a major just because everybody else is picking that major. That's not what we want to do. We want to make sure that you have the exact um, major that's going to fit you, that's going to fit what your goals are, that's going to fit your personality type, what you're interested in doing. So that's how we work with our students in that advising partnership. We also like to think about advising as teaching. Um, at UAB, we have the Center for Teaching and Learning, and we have a series called Advising as Teaching. And so as academic advisors on campus, we are a partner in that teaching process. Um, our goal is to make sure that we that they understand the holistic uh, viewpoint, that this is a teaching process, that we are helping to educate you on not only what it takes to major in this particular major and pick out these certain classes, but we're also teaching you skills. We're helping you make um, critical decisions and kind of understand um, the broad spectrum of a, the curriculum and why these things are a part of the curriculum. Um, and so uh, that advising is, is, is teaching process 
is something that we 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 take ownership of we value that process and, and our advisors really embrace that as we work with our students okay so i'm going to transition a little bit into talking about our academic support so <clears throat> um supplemental instruction is a branded program so it's uh, a national program that institutions host nationwide and we have supplemental instruction here at uab and we've had it um, at UAB for quite some time. So this is a program that is tried and true. It's been tested and I'm excited that it's a part of the Academic Success Center. But Supplemental Instruction or SI for short um, is, is basically peer-led review sessions that um, we provide for students who are in selected courses. And so typically the Supplemental Instruction is centered around our courses that uh, are typically um, tougher classes that we have already recognized that students may struggle with. Um, and so with this, we've put in this program in place because we know that sometimes in that hour or hour and 15 minute time slot that you're in class is usually um, sometimes not enough for you. Sometimes you need some reinforcement and it's okay if you need reinforcement because at one point in time, maybe we all needed that when we were college students or what have you. And so what the supplemental instructions do, it supplemental instructors do is give students a chance to kind of come together, sit down and say, okay, let's go over what was taught today. Let's talk about this particular concept or this particular problem. Um, and so that's what happens in usually twice a week in one hour sessions. Um, and these supplemental instruction leaders are students who actually go to the classes again. So they've taken the class before, they've passed it with an A or a B, and now they're coming back to that same particular class that they took. Um, they're sitting in with the students. Um, and in this instance, in this new environment, they will be remote with your student as well. Um, they know who the students are, the students know who they are. And then they will hold these one hour sessions sometimes twice a week, um, sometimes three times a week, it just depends. And usually when it's leading up to a test is when um, the students start to kind of ramp up uh, their participation attendance and what have you. And so these SI leaders are trained, they are recognized by the faculty members. Uh, these are paid positions and they work really tirelessly to help the students be successful. Um, they take their job very seriously in terms of making sure that they have um, materials to provide the students for that additional reinforcement. And so what they're doing is saying, this is how, you know, the things that I did to help me learn this material for um, this particular class, because some of these classes, the students are going to have to build. Um, they're going to have to know what they learn in this class. Um, that's going to be a, when they take the next class and the next level and the next level. And so we want to ensure that they are getting that um, that knowledge is kind of sticking with them. And so we take um, really much pride into our supplemental instruction program. And so we will be um, offering that again um, this fall, but in a different format. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that's going to happen. Okay, then we have our tutoring program. My little PowerPoint is a little slow, but it's coming. Um, and again, our tutors are certified by the College in Reading, College of Reading and Learning Association. So we have certified tutors and we offer, of course, free tutoring for our students. Um, the process is that students will make an appointment through our website. We have a, a system that we use that helps us to track our appointments, track the subjects, um, even down to the particular section that the students are taking. So we kind of know whose class you're in and we um, connect you with a tutor. Sometimes the tutors have taken those exact same professors, sometimes not, but most of the time they are able to assist you or assist that student with what they need as it relates to tutoring. Um, and so these are one-on-one -on -one sessions. So it's one student per tutor. Um, and these tutors work with the students in a 50 minute um, session um, and they help them to kind of 
you know, answer the questions that they, they may have. They may be taking an online class and it may be difficult for them to kind of understand after they've watched the videos or watched the lectures, they still may have, may have questions. And so in this instance, the tutors can definitely help those students to, you know, answer those questions. Um, they don't do the homework for them, so we don't want to get that confused with anything, but they will show them similar problems that they need to work out, especially if it's math related or something of that nature. And all of the subjects that we offer um, for tutoring is listed on our website. Um, so we're really excited to, again, bring that peer tutoring to our students. Um, again, free of charge. These are paid positions, so our tutors are paid. They work about 10 or 11 hours a week, um, and they really love what they do. Again, helping students be successful. Um, okay, so we're kind of getting into what else do we do in the VMASC office. And so um, we have uh, what we call our success workshops, our student success workshops. So they're 50 minute sessions and they're designed to help students um, build some additional skills. So maybe you've had not had to think a lot about what time management means in the past, um, especially if you're new to UAB, you're new, your new student, your first time student in college. And so time management becomes very critical as a college student. And so what we do is we show them how to develop time management plans and things of that nature to help them say, okay, how much time do I really need to spend studying for a class? Um, and then how do I get that accomplished in a day, especially if you're a working student, um, if you have other obligations, um, of course, you're attending class and things like that. So you have to fit all that into your day. Um, and so those are, that's just one example of the workshops that that we offer, um, but we again are trying to help them build not only the academic skill sets, but also the soft skills and things that they need. So maybe you've never had to do a presentation before. And so we will help you in a workshop, figure out what that means, what it means to present to, uh, a, to your class or to a group of students. Um, or to in any any type of situation where you're having to get in front of an audience. Um, and so we are um, excited to have those workshops again this fall um, for our students. And then um, new again this fall is our success coaching. Um, and so we're excited um, to um, slowly bring this on board because um, success coaching is, is not really a new concept, but it is a little bit newer. Um, because it's a little bit more of an intense support session. So you've got a workshop, which is kind of a one thing. You go to a workshop, you kind of get some information, some materials, and you kind of figure things out. Well, coaching is a, lot, a little bit of an ongoing um, process where we're working with students. So it's not like a one-time appointment or one-time session, but it's an ongoing process. And it has to be a student has to be committed to that because the academic coach may say i recommend that we meet every other week or we may meet every other month because depending on where that student is if a student is struggling um, if a student is having to get their gpa up then the more intense uh coaching may be required um, and then some students may say you know i just really need an accountability accountability partner and so they may want somebody to check in on them you know once a month and so what we'll do is we'll have a process where students can request a coaching appointment and fill out some information on our website. It'll go to one of our coordinators. They'll assess it, get the student in um, or via Zoom or on a phone call. And they will determine like what's the best uh, course of action to help you this semester. Like tell me exactly what's going on. What is it that we need to do to help support you? And again, it's uh, a responsibility of that student to sort of take ownership of that process. And coaching can be as successful as the student wants it to be. Um, and so we also have a referral process. So some students may be referred to us to say, I think the student um, may benefit from coaching from one of your academic coaches. So we're really excited to offer this service um, new in the fall again, slowly kind of bringing it on board um, as well. Okay, so um, I've been talking about fall and some of the changes. And so this is what to expect for the fall semester. So 
we are just really busy we're trying to get everything situated but um, all of our services will be virtual this 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 upcoming fall so we will be working in person in most days from campus um, but we'll be available to work with our students via zoom or on the telephone and we have you know again a wealth of technology um, available to help us in that regard so we are excited to um, you know kind of interact with this this new technology that we have so our academic advisors will be conducting um, appointments virtually and students can choose either a zoom appointment or a phone appointment on our website so there's a a, a place or some sometimes they'll get an email from the advisor and they have us we have a system that works with us that they can click on and select either um, I want a Zoom appointment or I want a phone appointment. And so we have that capability set up. So of course our tutoring will also be held virtually. Um, and so with that, our student tutors can work from the office and they will tutor the student via Zoom um, and have access to a whiteboard if they need to kind of work out problems and things of that nature. And, um, some of the Zoom uh, technology has the uh, capability of a whiteboard, but sometimes you just need that old fashioned dry erase marker and you want to just see that tutor work out their problem. And uh, trust me, I'm that kind of way. So I'm sure we have some students that may be like that as well. Um, we have um, our supplemental instruction sessions will mainly be held virtually, um, but we will uh, slowly integrate some um, social distancing um, in-person sessions, but we will have, students must let the uh, SI leader know in advance so we don't exceed the capacity for the room. So if a student wants to, to come in person and the supplemental instruction will, you know, will hold an in-person session, they will have to let them know ahead of time that they would like to be in person so that we can keep um, our social distancing guidelines in place for that. So, um, and it won't be all sessions, but there may be some that we do in that format. And we have a classroom that will allow us some in-person use for that. And so again, but most of our supplemental instruction will also be hosted um, via Zoom and then students use Canvas for their courses. And so a lot of the information and our supplemental instructors use Canvas. So there, a lot of their information will be in Canvas. And so that's sort of what students eat, live, and breathe. And so we want to make sure that we have as much of the information there as possible as well. We will host live virtual academic success workshops, so very similar to this format that you're watching um, us with Zoom. And then we will have some um, video hosted workshops that we will launch in October. So students can kind of watch those whenever they choose to. They'll just sign up ahead of time so they'll get the link to the video and they can kind of watch those um, videos and, and, and different things to help them with their uh, workshops. If some, some courses may require workshops and so we want to make sure that they have um, access to those. So in September we'll host our live workshop series and in October we'll launch our video workshop series. And then a new thing that we are going to do this fall semester is um, try to re, um, repurpose our space. So we have some individual uh, study rooms that we would typically have um, as overflow for tutoring, you know, for our space because um, our capacity is only to so much. And so we have these individual rooms that are glassed off there. They have doors. And so we will allow students starting in the fall semester to schedule a study room um, for, you know, attending class or just studying. They may have to take a Proctor U exam or just whatever um, they need uh, to do. And they just want to be away from the house for a little while, or um, they may be on campus and want to get out of their room. And so they'll be able to schedule that study room in advance. We will have all of the protocols in place to um, keep the study rooms um, disinfected and clean um, before they use them and after they use them. And then we expect the students to utilize the wipe in, wipe out procedures as well. So they'll have to um, get those uh, materials from our front desk and they'll wipe in. When they get there, they'll do whatever they want to do for those two hours, study, take a test, 
Um, and then when they get ready to leave, they'll wipe out and check out of that room. And then we will go back in and ensure that it's sanitized for the next student that comes. So um, we realize that it's uh, definitely been a transition for everyone. Um, and again, because Wi-Fi, not all Wi-Fi is made equal. <laughs> it is sometimes easier to come on campus and utilize UAB's Wi-Fi because we have such a powerful network. And so if you're here, you can bring your laptop or materials, kind of sit in that one study room and, um, and do your work in, um, in, in, in isolation and closed door and mask on and, uh, and that sort of thing. So. Uh, we're excited to be able to repurpose our space for that use. Again, I just want to make sure students get what they need. And I know that it was a struggle, and it sometimes still is a struggle uh, with students in Wi-Fi, maybe sketchy here and not working there, and um, a thunderstorm just comes up, and all of a sudden, you know, your power's out. Um, and so we want to have uh, as much of a, a resource available for our students as possible. So those are some things you can expect to see for the fall semester from the VMASC office. And um, all of these, um, all of this information that I just kind of went over will be um, on our website um, pretty soon. And so students can directly go directly to our website. Um, we have our social media. So if you're a Facebook user or Instagram user, you can find us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the Bulk Materials Academic Success Center or VMASC, and you'll see us there. Definitely like our page. Um, and again, all of this information will be posted there as well. So as I get ready to close, um, just a few tips that you can do to help your student um, be successful. So I, I just put a few things up that, um, you know, I thought would be a, a good kind of, if you, you know, once you kind of bring the student in on campus or you're wishing them well as they start their first day of classes, things that you can do um, to help your student um, be successful here at UAB. Um, the first thing I, I wanted to say was encourage and that um, encourage them to finish, to start strong and finish strong, okay? Um, if they start strong, then the finish strong is gonna naturally happen, okay? Um, if they go to class, if they're attentive, if they're on top of their work, if they're managing their time, things are going to fall in place. And I talked about all of the services that we offer. And so all of those things are there for the student. So just encourage them to start strong and finish strong. Um, get assistance early. I cannot stress that enough. Um, when you don't understand something, stop get some help. Don't try to belabor it, linger, figure it out later. I'll ask my roommate, I'm scared to ask my professor, I'm scared. Get assistance early. Um, so definitely encourage them to reach out and get some help. It is not, no question, it's a dumb question, a bad question, a stupid question or anything like that. Um, we wanna make sure that we help them as much as possible. Um, no, we cannot tutor every subject at UAB or have supplemental instruction for every class. However, we do have quite a bit of assistance. And if with something we can't do, we can definitely try to find you the help that you need um, on this campus. So reaching out early is um, always a good thing. Um, and just be open um, and be patient a little bit. Um, this is a new environment for us all. Um, and we're, you know, we're really doing the best that we can. So then if somebody doesn't call you right at nine o'clock and it's nine on one, just kind of be, be patient with us. We're, you know, we're doing the best that we can as well as um, trying to make sure that we are adhering to our guidelines that we have. And also um, we're all in this technology game together. So like I said, you could have a thunderstorm come up and it's like, it wipes you completely out. Um, and you have to reboot and wait for everything to start up. And so again, just kind of be open in, uh, to this new environment and these new situations. And so we just ask that uh, students 
be patient with us and then we're going to be patient with them as well. Um, so those are just a few tips that I wanted to share um, with you that again you can kind of share with your student and get a little bit of a understanding about how we are working um, to do our best to help students be successful here at UAB. Okay, so with that, um, I just really appreciate you having um, taken a little bit of your lunch break or time out your day to spend with me as I talk a little bit about what we do here in the VMASC office. And um, Meredith, I will take questions now. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for again, Jennifer, for saying and taking all the time to put all this great information together for everybody because I think it's really helpful information. And obviously, again, everything that you're doing is to make sure our students are successful, not just in their first year, but setting the foundation and the continuing. Yes. Yes. Um, so there are a few questions that are coming in. Again, for I want to remind everybody, just as we're starting to go through this, if you're watching us through Zoom, all you have to do is put your questions in into the Q and A box down at the bottom of your screen. But if you're also watching us on Facebook, we are monitoring that as well, so you can put your questions into the comments section. There is a question, though, that did come in, Jennifer, about the SI options and tutoring. Are those already, the, for the fall semester, are those already up on your website at this point? And do students have to be specifically enrolled in the SI program? Okay, so the SI um, schedule and tutoring schedule is probably, is not up yet, but it will be up soon. Um, there is no particular enrollment in the program. Supplemental instruction is uh, decided upon just based on a lot of different factors. So once you are enrolled in a class that has supplemental instruction attached to it, you automatically um, can participate in supplemental instruction. So it is attached to specific classes. Um, and again, based on a lot of different parameters. But tutoring is available um, for any class, but we only tutor in certain subjects, if that makes sense. So hopefully that answered your question. Yes, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, there's not a way to tell on a student's class schedule at the beginning, is there to know that they are in a class that has SI attached to that particular class? No, it is not on the schedule, but it is something that is in the syllabus and they will know the very first day if they're in a course that has supplemental instruction. Yes, perfect. Jennifer, while, and again, for any other questions, please feel free to put them in anywhere. But while we're waiting for some other questions, one thing that I thought of is, I, I believe that a lot of our family members that are watching right now are family members of new and incoming students. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what you were just talking about, I think is all very critical and wonderful and, and needed to know. Where do you see, though, for our first year students, the biggest pitfall that you see them fall into? And then what is it that family members can start to do now in having conversations and prepping their students in order to help avoid said pitfall? <laughs> Very good question. Um, for our first year students or new students to UAB, it's again, stop and get help early. Um, I have seen over and over and over again um, and I hear advisors and I hear our coordinators say, well, I wish you had just told me this a month ago. I wish you had just asked a week ago. Um, why didn't you email me when you had the problem the first time or you started experiencing problems early on? So really, really encourage them to seek out help. And advisors are usually the frontline person. Um, so if they, whoever their academic advisor is, they may not be in it. Uh, one of our advisors, but whoever their advisor is can get them where they need to be. So please tell them, don't wait to the last minute um, to ask any type of questions or get any type of help. I think that's really critical, especially for things like SI. From Everything that I know is if a student starts to participate in SI from the beginning. From the beginning. With the, before they realize that they need it, then that the help that the benefits of that are just exorbitantly higher, obviously, yes. if you were to wait yes. behind. Yes, and because we use Canvas, um, you know, some of the the comments we hear is that, well, the SI session was held when I had to work, um, but the SI leaders always post their worksheets or anything that they're working on in Canvas, so the student has to just really uh, know where to go, know how to get there. 
and know what information is there. So every student will with a, that has a that's a, in an SI class will also have an SI Canvas shell for that class. So um, all of that information will be there. And the same kind of idea for tutoring as well, right? Making sure that the students are taking advantage of the tutoring options. If it's a, if that tutoring is available for their subject, make sure that they're doing yes, it. Yes, yes. And I will admit that, you know, I am not a math person, right? And so um, we we do see uh, I, typically the major, more, more of our sessions are heavy science and math um, for obvious reasons. But um, I'm a person that uh, I'm probably going to be one of the first people to make that appointment for tutoring, even though I've been to class, I'm doing my homework, um, I'm an auditory learner. So I have to hear something. Mm -hmm. um, so me just looking at the problem on the paper, it's just like looking at a foreign <laughs> language. I've got to hear you work that problem out. And so, uh, again, when you know how you learn, when you understand that, okay, I'm going to need some additional help. Because, again, you may be learning remotely, you may be in class, and then when you're in class, you're only going to be in class with a few people. Um, so it's going to be really difficult to connect, and we understand that. And we, I, you know, we hate that it's that way, but that's, you know, kind of what we're dealing with. So that's, that's why it's very important for you to know ahead of time, these are the services I'm going to need, um, and go ahead and take advantage of it um, as soon as you know. I agreed a thousand percent over <laughs> Students that I like teach in class to everything else, that is definitely our challenge. There is a, a really good question that just came in that okay. I think again about SI. If the SI section of a subject is not in your respective section, is it helpful for the students to join the group? For instance, if it is a, they're in a if the, for there are numerous sections of various science or biology, chemistry courses, can they? If there are SIs in one section, um, that or time-wise or things along those lines, can they do different SIs? Yes and no. I will say that. So we have some subjects where there is a pretty commonality across the section, and so then yes, if you can't go to this particular SI set session that's connected with this class, you may can go to another one. So they do kind of work in conjunction with each other. Um, but not all of the classes are like that because, again, that SI leader um, has been in this particular class with this professor, and that's kind of how they're structuring their sessions and their worksheets and their whatever. It's kind of based on that professor's modality of teaching and how they design that class. So sometimes it can vary, um, but in the in most of the cases, um, yes, the information can be cross you know, translated from this particular section to this one. Um, but again, that is something that you will know more about or the student will know more about when they, um, you know, read the syllabus and they're talking with the professor, you know, the first couple of weeks or what have you. So. And for our family members, for to tell your students to start to prepare now, read their syllabus over <laughs> yes. and over again. <laughs> It is critical that that's it's the key thing for our students to know that that is a everything that they're going to need to know about their class is in the syllabus. It is mm -hmm. essentially not even essentially it is the teacher's contract with the student mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and vice versa. Yes, and and professors will publish their classes when when they have them ready. We have a kind of a firm a date. I guess they have to publish by, but some of them may publish them really early and if they do go ahead and start looking at the syllabus i mean it does not hurt to do that so absolutely not there's a question that came in regarding the study rooms uh, that you were mentioning where students are able to reserve are those based on the policies right and procedures for the fall semester are those study rooms reserved for only one person or two or three students use can they reserve it together and use it for a study session si variation etc uh, it will only be available for one person um, because um, some of the rooms are not big enough to, to hold to. We do have one room that can, uh, two people can socially distance, but we, we would rather just keep it at one per room. And as time goes on, we may change that. Right now, that's kind of our, our standard that we're going to use. Um, but yeah, if, you know, I understand they want to, you know, study together, I get it. Um, but we just can't do that 
just this soon. So um, we hope to be able to expand that to, you know, at least two people later, but right now just one person per room. And um, again, we're thinking about a two hour block because uh, a lot of times when I'm doing my workshops, I tell students, it takes you 30 minutes just to get ready to study. You haven't studied anything yet. You're just getting out your laptop. You're checking your email. You have to check your cell phone three or four times. And so these are things I kind of tell them in my workshops. Um, so, you, you know, you haven't read the first piece of the book or you haven't picked, pulled out your pen and worked out a problem yet. You're just getting ready. So, yeah, so that's why I think we're going to do two hour blocks um, to, to allow the students time to kind of get in, get settled um, and spend that time in, in, in most of our classes of course, are 50 minutes. So if they're doing a class, they could, you know, they've got that 50 minute block. Some classes are an hour and 15 minutes. So they kind of have that span if they want to come in and actually do their class while they're sitting in that study room. So. Um, there's just family member that came in that just said they wanted to very much say thank you for setting all of this up and preparing and sharing all this information with our students. Oh, no problem. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Me and Meredith have been tag team and doing stuff off and on since since she's been here, since I've been back to UAB. So um, I enjoy doing these um, with her and sharing this information because um, most times they'll listen to you uh, before they listen to us. So if you tell them to do it, then they'll, yeah, then they'll come on board with us, so. Agreed. There's a question that actually came in from our Facebook page as well, asking about is it what is the difference between SI and recitation? Okay. Or, or are they the same? <laughs> they are not the same. Um, so a recitation um, is very similar, but they are attached to our science classes and only certain science classes have what they call a recitation. Um, and so with the recitations, um, they are designed to provide um, that additional support for the student in those particular heavy science classes. Um, but SI is a, little bit, is a little bit different because it's peer led, um, so it's not an instructor. And at the same time, these are students who are really honing in on specific problems that was discussed with their particular during that class, you know, maybe on that Tuesday. So on Tuesday night, they may have an SI session. It's like, let's go back over what we just learned. Mm -hmm. um, and, or they may have it on a Thursday night or whatever day or time that they're having this. So um, yeah, a little bit different, um, but very similar. So. Regarding the study rooms, once again, how are students going to be able to make reservations for those study rooms? Okay, so on our website that where the students go in, so uab.edu slash, slash success, um, there'll be a link that says, you know, schedule an individual study room. They just click on that. They'll show the times and days that are available. And so they have, of course, log in with their Blazor ID and password. So it's the same process that we use and the same system we use to schedule tutoring um, for our students. Our um, SI sessions are, are set up differently. So again, they're connected to the particular class. So everything they need to know about SI is related to that section of that class. And they will provide when to come, where to come, how to do Zoom links, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, but anything else you schedule um, goes through our website. So, okay. um, and they'll be able to, you know, there'll be four study rooms and they can pick um, the time blocks that are open, you know, for them to study. And are those going to be released? Have y'all determined yet? Are those going to be released on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? For when, how, how far in advance a student can register? Um, usually, they, yeah, so they can only schedule um, seven days in advance, and then they can only schedule it um, up to twice a week, I think. That's kind of how we... It's either two or three times. We're still kind of working that out, but nice. yes. So no more than seven days in advance. And usually tutoring is kind of the same way. So we're following that same process, but we're trying to see if we're going to alter if you can schedule no more than two sessions or three sessions. So same thing, two, two times for the room or three times for the room that week. So we don't have, um, you know, somebody scheduling the same time every week or every day, and we don't have enough availability for it for students. You don't have the student that's moved in and, and created a whole new space for themselves. 
Yes, <laughs> right. Not that any of our students would not create that's happening, but campus. you know. So we're 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 still kind of working that out and testing it and what have you. So, but we're we're ready to go um, with that and excited to be able to do that because again, I just you know it it was just so funny to I was driving by on campus one day and we had the parking lot you know where they could come and do Wi-Fi and the students were just sitting out there in a chair or sitting out. I'm like, God, it's hot outside and you know. I just was like, well, something we got to be something we can do. And so we were, again, fortunate to have this space. And since we won't have as much contact on campus, it's like, hey, we can utilize this for that purpose and still social distance, clean the rooms, do everything we need to do. So um, I'm excited to provide that. Um, I'm excited that you're able to provide that as well. I know how needed that is, especially as we're working on the social distancing process, but in many, and but also in because of that, many times we're going to have these virtual opportunities where students are still going to be potentially in a residence hall room or, mm -hmm. or at home or something else, and they need to be able to find that space for themselves. So I think that this is a brilliant idea, and I appreciate yes. it. Yes, thank you. That seems to be all of the questions that have been coming in at this point, Jennifer. So I want, first and foremost, just want to say thank you again for doing this today, to, um, for Dr. Wyckoff to take the time to share yeah. all this wonderful information. It's been very, very helpful. Yes, great. Um, and then for any of our family members, if you're anything like me, you may come up with questions as soon as we end this presentation. <laughs> Please know that we are, both of our offices are available and here for any questions or things that you um, think of later on. Please don't hesitate to contact us, especially the Office of Parent and Family Services. We are here specifically to help you. So please reach out. I know very easily how to get a hold of Dr. Wyckoff. So <laughs> I didn't get a response. And then for any of our family members, if you want to share this information with your students or other family members that weren't able to participate today, it is automatically and already out on our parent, our parent and Family Services Facebook page. It will also be up on the Parent and Family Services website within the next few days as well. So this way, it's, you can still go back and review this information at a later date. But I just want to again say thank you to everyone so much for joining us this afternoon. And most especially, thank you to Dr. Wyckoff for sharing all of the wonderful resources of, that are available to our students through the VMAS. No problem. Thank you so much. And go Blazers. Go Blazers. Have a great afternoon, everybody.